Welcome to the webinar, Matzah Brai, Eight Ways for Eight Days, presented by FJMC, Federation of Jewish Men's Clubs. Um, for those of you that don't know, we are an international umbrella organization for partnership of about 200 men's clubs and brotherhoods, and we serve about 15,000 men around the globe. Our mission is to involve Jewish men in Jewish life by strengthening our network of men's clubs, brotherhoods, and now individual memberships. And uh, although we're concentrated in the U.S. and Canada, uh, we do have clubs around the world and our influence in, is felt worldwide. Uh, we've presented more than 100 webinars since the pandemic began, and we're working hard to provide value to our members and to the Jewish community in general. Um, FGMC offers an opportunity for people to express themselves through participating in and leading activities that are most important to them. For example, tonight. Um, my name is Bruce Fagan, by the way, and I'm the hosting this for FJMC. I'm a past president of the Middle Atlantic region and on the webinar committee. Uh, and I'm going to mute, well, I'm sure you are all muted so you can enjoy the presentation. I will be unmuting you after the presenter's uh, remarks. Uh, I should mention that if you're enjoying the webinar, um, if you would like to make a contribution to FJMC, you can go to fjmc.org and uh, I'll, I'll actually put a link in the chat for donations if you'd like to do that. Um, tonight, I'm proud to introduce Jack Marine. He's a member of the Board of Directors of the Middle Atlantic Region, and he's co-chair of our multi-region retreat in June. He's known in the Philadelphia area as Nature Jack, and he does entertaining science and nature programs for children of all ages. Jack, take it away and tell us who our, our special guest is. Welcome to the uh, special pre-Passover uh, matzah brai cooking eight ways for eight days. Um, we're in the house of uh, Joe Carver, who you can see to my right here. Dr. Joe Carver is a uh, cardio-oncologist. He's a very well-regarded uh, uh, physician in his field. And um, I'm recording, this is being recorded from his beautiful kitchen in the downtown part of Philadelphia. I've known Joan for uh, excuse me, I've known Joe, not Joan, for, for 20 years as a member and past president of our synagogue, Har Zion Temple in Penn Valley, Pennsylvania. We are Zooming with you today from the Society Hill area of Philadelphia in Joe and Peggy Carver's home. Uh, way back in 2016, when I was president of Har Zion Men's Club, I organized a pre-Passover cook-off called Matzabrai Eight Ways for Eight Days. It was a huge success with multiple chefs in the synagogue kitchen. And here we are today with the first post-COVID matzah bari cook-off with the best of our chefs, Dr. Joe Carver, a, a runner-up in the Manischewitz cooking contest, which is a nationwide cooking contest. Um, at our, uh, in 2016, we made uh, matzah bari nachos, matzah bari cheese and mushroom frittata, uh, matzah bari pizza, matzah brai salad with pesto avocado and favorite protein. Uh, we made matzah brai alfredo. We made matzah brai sweet kugel and we made Rosh Hashanah matzah brai, a dessert. Tonight, uh, Joe will take the uh, selections he's chosen to do. He will actually, on the invitation, I think it said he's doing five, but he's actually gonna do all eight in the, in the time we have. Uh, my name again is Nature Jack Marine. I teach science to preschoolers for the last 15 years. And as Bruce mentioned, I was a, I am a director of the Federation of Jewish Men's Club Middle Atlantic Regions Board. And I am pleased and excited to share the cooking talents of my friend here tonight. Whether you cook along with Joe or try one of, or more of these recipes during Passover, you will not be disappointed. And now here's Joe. Thank you, Jack. Uh -oh. Oh, by the way, by the way, I made this tie especially for this occasion. Matzah tie. Okay. It could end up in a recipe one way. So welcome everybody. Uh, uh, so to try to get this in uh, in a reasonable amount of time, I, I've done all the prep work ahead of time and uh, we'll walk through the steps. I have to tell you that uh, when, when we get to the eighth day of Passover and everybody's scrambling for rye bread and bagels. I'm like making more fried matzah. Uh, I really uh, love it and Passover goes like too fast. So it's a, a very versatile, versatile dish. It's not like your grandmother made. 
although I'm going to make something that my father made um, that I think was passed down from Eastern Europe, which is really very different than what we're used to. And I, I actually made a test batch last night of six pieces and I ate every single one of them. <laughs> so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start out with the basic recipe. And I know that there's recipe uh, ingredients in all of the, in, in the emails. Right. But uh, uh, the nice part about this is there is no recipe. It's uh, whatever tastes good to you um, from the basics. And then you can go to town and basically make matzo brai as the center dish for every night of Passover, right? you and probably won't get away like at the seders with it, but yeah. but the reality is you can do a lot of stuff with it and and have a lot of fun, uh, and it's only limited by your imagination and your ability to just be creative and not care what other people think. And in the end, um, you may make some stuff that's really bad, and you'll toss it, and um, you can feed it to the squirrels. Start again. So every ingredient that we're going to use tonight um, is pesadic, so that you can do it. Most of, a lot of the dishes are dairy, um, but for the ones that aren't dairy, you can add um, any sort of meat protein that you want. Um, I'm a vegetarian, so you're not going to get any meat dishes uh, out of me tonight. So we're going to start with the basic recipe, and I'm going to Swing around here. Now I'm going to turn the camera around so you can see what he's doing. Uh, by the way, this is a handheld camera. Okay. So um, it's not going to be super um, technical, but I'll do the best okay. I can do. So this is just six six pieces of matzah. I, I'm using six because I'm going to use the whatever I make for a couple of different dishes. But you can get away with a couple of people with, with three pieces of matzah. And I just break it up. Wait, Joe, don't you have to save the middle matzah? No. The api common? No. no Not tonight, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to be okay. funny here, you know. And so, break it up, and then just some cold water to cover it. Before I started talking, I did wash my hands, which is like a good thing to do. So just let it, let, let it soak for a couple of minutes till it gets a little soft. So is it better to use cold water or warm water? It probably doesn't matter. Probably doesn't from matter. From the standpoint of the environment, cold water is better. Okay. That actually looks fluorescent, yeah. or if that's such a word. And then what I have here is I chopped up two scallions, green onions, four eggs, and then I have, I have salt and pepper, um, some granulated garlic, uh, ginger because I think it adds a little bit of, uh, of zest to it. And if you want it, you know, if you want it spicy, you can put horseradish in or whatever. But I'm going to keep this kind of bland. So the consistency is, is soft, but not mushy. And I'm going to just drain the water. And a little squeeze to, to dry it out a little bit. And then Add the eggs. Now, there are there are different ways of making this. Um, some people fry this in either oil or butter and with salt and pepper, and then add the egg mixture at the end. But I I use do it with the eggs in the beginning. But you can go either way. You can compost the eggshells if you have a compost pile. <laughs> Okay. So the four eggs in there. Four eggs. One for each of the four children. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. And and then I don't. Oops. I basically don't measure. So just a couple of squirts of garlic, of uh, ginger, a couple, of, a little bit of gar granulated garlic, uh, pepper. Uh, we like it a little spicy, so or peppery and salt. And I just get a sense of how much I need, but you can do it to taste, and you can always add salt at the end. Sorry, the color is weird. We have yeah. the green onions that I chopped, and then 
regular onions if you want. But what I did also was that I, I just um, did some, I sauteed some onions and, and, and I'm just gonna throw them in. Great, so that's like a South Philly uh, touch, right? Yeah, so. Okay. Onions, cheese with. Yeah, and then, <laughs> and then just mix it together. And, and actually, more often than not, I just, I just do it with my hands. My hands are so clean. this is your base um, model, so right? this is the base, yeah. The base. The base. So this is the base, and I just mix it all together. My wife would say that this is gross, but I did wash my hands first. That's fine. So um, you, there is a question uh, somebody asked, and this is probably a good time to put it in. They asked uh, four eggs for six matzo pieces. Is that the sweet spot for matzo bride? Yeah. So I usually, if I make it for myself, I usually use two two pieces of two or three pieces of matzo and one egg. So this is because I'm making I'm going to make a bigger batch. So and then, and then the, I would I like the consistency to be a little. So if you if you do it with your hands, your hands are wet when it's done. So. It's a little bit. Yeah. Shake my hand. And you don't do that. <laughs> okay, and then I have a, a frying pan. I just put a little bit of avocado oil on the bottom. So, uh, so okay, so so this is cooking. This this is cooking. I have a spatula, and, and I just just keep constantly breaking up so that it, 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 it doesn't form giant giant pieces. As that's cooking, I have a, this is like on television. I have yeah. a batch, a batch that I half cooked. You yeah, were watching week. Julia now on a, on a. And I half cooked so last night. They're so prepping all the meals. Just, I don't know. I'm sorry, the, it, like, it is not blue. The camera's making it look a little blue. Yeah, so, but, um, so this is how it comes out. There you and go. And then for the first thing that we're gonna do is, is the Mexican one. And I actually had a good time doing this last night. So, so this is the cooked matzo broth. So that's, it's half cooked. Half cooked. Okay, so. Like uh, you are, when you go yeah. out to dinner with me, Bruce, you get half cooked, you know. Okay. I know it's a half baked idea okay. is what it is. It's oh. um, one, uh, one avocado. One avocado. Just, um, avocado rice. from Mexico. There's some uh, cheese and you can get Kosher yeah. Passover cheese all over the place. So it's like Mexican, it's like Mexican uh, cheese. Mexican mixed and cheese. From, and at the bottom yeah. is chili powder. Chili powder mixed in with uh, shredded no, Mexican uh, okay. cheese. So for the basic thing, Jack, you want to bring the camera yeah. over here. You can see that it, it's starting to get a little bit brown. And then if I was just going to not do anything to it, I would cook it. So it gets a little crusty, a little dry. A little out. crusty. You get crusty. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to only do this halfway so that we can do the other things after. Like the, not like the crusty crab uh, with SpongeBob school. Okay. Or, so okay. this is the, the half cooked one. Get warm and mix together with the, the cheese. The cheese. Milk. So here's about. Um, two tablespoons of of uh, chili powder and a cup of a cup of cheese, and that's going to come together. Pretty quickly. So the cheese is melting on the uh, throughout the matzo ball. And while that's cooking, we're going to be saying, Tom, I, I did one last night where instead of breaking it up, I just let the matzo ball get solid. I cooked it on both sides. And then I have some, some cheese. And you can use any kind of cheese you want. I put it, I, some people put cheese on the top, some people put cheese on the bottom. I'm a bottom cheese person. Just provolone? This is provolone. Provolone has just actually been adopted for Passover as 
functional for pair sample and some tomato sauce. Beautiful. Um, some people put the cheese on top of yeah, the tomato sauce. Whatever you like. Yeah. And then I'm going to put this in the oven, which I preheated. Just so that you the cheese on that. At uh, what temperature for how long? I don't know. You just watch it so the cheese melts. Okay, so this, this came out great. You can see that it's getting, in fact, you can see it's like crusty. 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 Um, right. And then go. what we want to do. So, there you go. Is put it back in the bowl. And actually, this made a lot. And I have a mixture of sour cream and salsa. Nice. That whitish blue is the sour cream. Give it a good mix. And you got it. has a radioactive glow to it. Wow, does that look good? And we're plating our first matzo brai. Okay. Hey. Wow. Those, are, those aren't paper plates, I just found out. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I can taste this? Yeah, cheers. Ah, oh, spectacular. Fantastic. Okay. If you stay around after the uh, webinar, we'll serve it to the audience. Okay. So that's, that's Mexican. Hasta la vista. Mexican matzo bride. Whoops. So that's the basic thing. And uh, and I got I made last night. I made um, I took some basil and some olive oil, basil, garlic, and some lemon juice. And I'm just gonna throw that right onto the matzo bry in the stove. Put it in there. I mean, Again, sorry about that blue shade. It's actually green. Yeah. So not blue. What's next? <laughs> Had some pre-cooked. Yeah, this is this is more the pre-cooked stuff on this one. Mm -hmm. so this is uh, Italian. This is Italian. Viva la matzo bride. Is that Italian? The other thing is, you can do this fast. Right? It doesn't take a lot of time to come up with a whole meal. Wow. Right, Jack, you can take some of that. Gonna well, if you, yeah, if you bring it over, I'll definitely uh, give you a quick tour of the kitchen. We're ready for the family to come over. Okay. Okay. Oops. I don't want to look over my wires. So we have two so far, right? We have Mexican and Italian. Mexican and Italian. Mexican and Italian. Italian matzo brai. Okay. So now, now we're going to do a sweet one. A what one? Sweet. So sweet. We basically. Um, this is one cup of brown sugar and two tablespoons of cinnamon. One cup of brown sugar and two tablespoons of cinnamon. Cinnamon, 
in the thing. And, and actually, for this one, I'm going to put some butter in it. And some butter. Is it butter or? Butter. Real butter. butter. Real butter. How much butter? A large pat of butter. And he puts it right into the pan so it starts to melt immediately. And this is going to caramelize a little bit as we, as we do this. Trying to caramelize the ingredients. And then I make it a little bit. It's going to the ingredient closet. Mm. So and then we're adding some uh, honey. Oh, just a little bit of honey. A little bit of honey. Just dry. Because of adding the uh, it's a, little dry. a little dry. Can you see the honey, folks? I'm sorry for, for saying this, but my honey's on the Zoom as well. Okay. Wow, that looks good. Cook a little longer so the brown sugar caramelizes. Boy, that smells good. Can you see it caramelizing there? This is the Italian, and this is the sweet. Wow, who the we? Sweet as honey. So let's quickly go over the ingredients of the sweet, John. Okay, sweet. Basic matzo bread. Cup of brown sugar, and again, depends cinnamon. on how much matzo bar you use. But cup of brown sugar, two tablespoons of cinnamon, um, a, a probably a butter, tablespoon, a tablespoon of honey, of, of honey, and some butter, some butter, okay. a small paddle, like a tablespoon of butter. And look at that, Is that beautiful. Wow, you could put that in the refrigerator with harden, wouldn't it? Until like almost like a candy. Same thing. Can't see him, but he's at the pan putting the basic um, matzo bry into the pan. There you go. And um, we're going to just add a little bit more avocado oil. That's what is it? Avocado oil. Avocado you can oil. Use any oil. So any oil. You can't use corn oil in Passover. You can't use corn oil in Passover. Okay. Everybody knows that. So this one. This is veggie. This is pretty good. So this is some portobello, portobello uh, mushroom. Portobello mushroom. Onion, green pepper, red pepper, onion, quinoa. Okay. Not like quinoa. Not like ballad quinoa. Yeah, quinoa. but quinoa is a quinoa. It's a grass. I think it's okay for piercing. Q U I N N O A quinoa. Q U I N O A O A quinoa. Okay. And uh, I'm just gonna let this blend together. But you can seriously sorry, you can, sorry you about the right. camera work. If you don't like mushrooms, don't use mushrooms. You can add mushrooms if you want, you can put any vegetables Anything. in technically. But it's just it, actually the vegetables become the star of this. Did you hear that? The vegetables are the star of this one. <laughs> Or using cast iron pan? No. Um, you can. Well, you can. That, well, that's yeah. the best. Mm -hmm. um, it, it distributes yeah. the heat totally evenly. So what's this uh, pan this called? Just a, this is just a non-stick. This is a non-stick pan with a wooden handle. 
Do you use the chopped onions, scallions and onions for the sweet recipe oh, also? The yeah, Jerusalem I, one. I did, but you probably shouldn't, but I already made it, so. So that Good makes question. it like an Asian flavor. Yeah, but it actually, yeah. but you know, there's so much sweetness to it that it overwhelms that. And actually, it's, I mean, in my mind, it's the same as putting like salt on chocolate. It just brings out an extra depth of flavor. A zest. Yeah. And here's your sweet guy. Is that beautiful? Mm. Wow. Almost okay. looks like a painting. Italian, and we're cooking veggie. Another minute. Okay. Another minute, he said. And he's slicing his matzo brai pizza with us. And actually, you know, everybody makes pizza out of plain matzo. Yeah. This is so much better. The thing about about this is it really doesn't take that much extra work to use matzo brine. Okay. Uh, this is the uh, this is veggie. the veggie ver version. Probably Joe's favorite. No, no, actually, I think one of his favorites. I, think it, I like. I mean, is everyone in your household like a vegetarian? Different. Everyone except my wife. <laughs> Wow, spectacular. Okay. Wow. And then we're, we're perfect on time. So the next to last one is what I call leftovers. <laughs> like whatever you could. Find. Okay, here's your leftovers. So this is some olives that I cut up, sweet potato, baked potato. And asparagus. Wow. So it's not, it's a little bit like that, but, but this just happens. It's, to it's be. a twist on the veggie. Wow. Oops. And I, I, I baked the potatoes and the asparagus were just sort of cooked beforehand. There's a sweet that. potato in there? Yes, the sweet potato. Asparagus. Asparagus. Wow, looks delicious. And, and, and pre baked potato. And just a matzo ball, yeah. A little more avocado oil. I'm gonna that cook. Is avocado oil your favorite? I like it because it's only smoke. Okay. okay, and for the, the last one, which is a little more complicated, we're gonna need, we can probably use this one. Oops. I'm gonna set the camera down here a little bit. I'm probably making everybody dizzy. Okay, so this is this is completely different. And now for something completely different. Okay. So I'm gonna just take two sheets of matzah. Two sheets of matzah. And I'm gonna to try to do this. Your top is in there. It's okay. Okay. So I'm just gonna break this. It's easy just to make. Break it into, it into quarters. Oh my goodness. This is heavenly. Okay. Mm. Of course it is. It's all that honey. How could it not be? I'm just putting Oh my goodness. Okay. Well, like that's it. So what time is Zahav coming over to pick all this stuff oh up? My God. Okay, so let me tell you what this is. Okay. This is just some matzo meal. Matzo meal. This turned brown because you see, but I took one potato, one little onion, and I put it, I have this. And they became friends. I have this famous blender. Mm -hmm. Mini okay. uh, yeah. Nutribullet, mini Nutribullet. Yeah. Or one egg. One egg. And I blended it into that mixture. So one egg, one potato, and one onion. Yeah, and then some salt and pepper. Uh, salt and pepper. Um, and I don't think I did anything else. Mm -hmm. And then, without... Oops. 
First accident. Yeah. Not bad. Okay. So. Right. So this is so without soaking, right? Into the dry matzo. Yeah, into into the thing, into this mixture. The onion, the potato, yeah. the salt and pepper, and then dip it into coconut, and, and then is that a raw onion and a raw potato? Yeah, yeah, and then coat it. Toad it like you're gonna fry it in the skillet. And then dip it in the matzo meal to give it the coating. Mm -hmm. Southern fried. And you can only do. I noticed you turned the heat down. Yeah, because I want it to burn. You want it to what? I don't want it to burn. You don't want it to burn. So tell us one more time what's in there. There's yeah. salt and pepper. Yeah, salt and pepper. So I, I in the blend, in the... In the Nutribullet. And there is one potato, one egg, one small onion. And the, the potato is raw or cooked? Raw. Raw. raw, all raw, and it's all blended in the blender. Yeah, gotcha. And then, okay. and then put it on the dry matzah, coat it with the matzah meal, fry it lightly, or yeah, skillet, you know, to cold fry or saute, whatever you call that. And you can do this is it's veggie, so you can do this in butter too. Mm -hmm. And it gets crispy. Crispy. Wow. Okay, chefs. One minute, chefs. Is that our last one? That's it. Is Here this the one, one from one, Eastern two. Europe? Three, four, five, six, seven, and in the face of it. Is this the one from Eastern Europe? Yeah. Okay. Oh. Wow. It's going to make another batch of them. Because you have to take the dry matzo. Wow. Let's see how we get this. There you go. Dipping it in the mix, soaking the dry matzah or coating it, and then putting it into the matzah meal, and then putting it onto the, and then you're gonna add some avocado oil in there. Yeah. Depending on what you do for Passover, olive oil is good, butter. Um, Anything except corn oil. You can't use corn oil because corn oil. So any kind of oil is good. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Let's see. Here we go. Oops. That's really good. Is it good? <laughs> it's really good. Does it take you back to your childhood? I guess. It's really good. 
And now for his finale, he's going to uh, make matzo brai with my tie. What do you think? Matzo brai tie. Wow. Voila. So anything to add here, Joe? Use your imagination and have fun. Have fun. Use your uh, matzo brai base and add anything you want. How about just a basic uh, matzo brai with egg and do you use milk in there in that recipe or do you add fat to it? Um, well, usually when you're just just plain, you can do anything you want with it. Do you use whole milk or skim milk when you make that? Just a plain matzo brai? No, when I cook, I use like real stuff. Like I use butter and I use whole milk. Uh-huh. Okay, you heard it here. I'm going to, um, I'm going to unmute everybody. If people want to um, uh, ask a question. Uh, looks like is Eugene's unmuted. Do you have a question? Just wondering about the uh, the corn oil. Depending right. on where you are in no. your in your ritualistic attitude. Um, uh -huh. so your you... is okay. okay. So you won't be condemned if you yeah. use corn oil. Just don't bring the rabbi over. <laughs> don't bring the rabbi over for lunch. <laughs> uh, Eric, do you have a question? <laughs> Just one comment about corn oil, because I have a Sephardi Ashkenazi rabbi who gets up and rants and raves about kit and the oat, saying that it's not, it's not halakhically driven, but as Ashkenazi Jews, it's our minha, it's our, it's our tradition, so we don't use corn oil. But it's not halakha, it's not Torah. All right, my question is this. The base that you create, that, you, that you've uh, used has sauteed onions. Um, that's something new to me. Um, is that something which is... Um, you know, you every every recipe you use has the sautéed onions, or is that kind of an optional ingredient? And thanks for taking my question. Great, great seminar. Thank you. Okay, so most of the time when I make it, like if I'm just doing it for me, I dried have, onion flakes. So no, I, don't, I don't. This is what he uses most of the time. But most of the time, either chop up on you know dice up an onion or use the the, the nice thing about the dried onion is that when you put it in it, it gives it a little crunch. Elaine, do you have a question? I see you're unmuted. Um, no, I was just going to comment that I think the reason we don't use corn oil is because we consider corn to rise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that <laughs> this is the most important thing, you, you know, in Kashrut and, uh, and in Pesach is that you have a mentality that you're thinking about what you're doing and and it has meaning and that uh you know I, I still stay pretty straight like i live on tofu and i don't eat tofu or chickpea i do chickpeas during during pesach but uh you recognize why you're doing it what you're doing that you have some it's just not every day and you're not eating just to eat um then you take it to a higher level and it doesn't, you you can be less as strict as you want. That's all. Okay, so one, someone else asked me a question on the uh, webinar. Uh, somebody wanted to know what each thing smells like. So this is the, uh, this is the, uh, the sweet one. And it smells like, I don't wanna stick my nose in it, but, um, <laughs> There's a very cinnamony smell, synonymity or whatever the word is, and also a little bit of honey. The um, the first one we made, Joe, what was this one called? Uh, oh, that was the Mexican one. The Mexican one. Now that should have an aroma because definitely of the chili, because of the chili. Definitely smells like a Mexican, like a nacho type of flavor. The, <laughs> um, the vegetarian one probably takes on yeah, this bit of onion. I would say the the smell is more going to be from the peppers. Yeah, I smell the the um, more of a mushroom peppery yeah. smell, and uh, that's the Italian one. So the that, Italian that should be basil leaf for sure. It definitely <laughs> smells like olive oil. Very Italian. Uh, well, the pizza was amazing, and this smells like a um, kind of like a potato latte to me. 
Well, yeah. the Eastern yeah. European. Yeah, because the potato, you know, some people make potato. Yeah, the potato and the onion mix yeah. is what you have in a potato lock or, or a potato kugel. Well, folks, um, I want to thank uh, Dr. Joe for uh, for instructing us and uh, and uh, Nature Jack for uh, putting this all together and suggesting this. And uh, where can we buy your not your matzo tie? That's what I want to know. Take an old tie and yeah. you hot glue gun the uh, tie, and then you add on pieces of matzo. Make it. You'll have up. to give us. You'll have to give us the recipe at the next installment. Right. You can go to fjmc.org forward slash webinars to see all the ones that we've done and uh, and also uh, a list of things that are upcoming and uh, we're going to have this online on uh, on YouTube right after the holiday uh, on uh, you know during during Passover uh, you'll find it on YouTube if you go to FJMC uh, webinars you'll you'll find it and uh, once again thank you very much everybody for joining us and uh, thank you, Dr. Joe. And thank Jack. you to the, all the members of FJMC and all the uh, participants from Horace Zion Temple and anyone else who knows uh, the Marine family. We're Jack from Pennsylvania. And uh, I hope to see all the FJMC guys on the East Coast at the uh, retreat on June 10th, 11th, and 12th. And uh, thank you all again, and good night.